two of the trademarks of living high above the Arctic Circle, unrelenting cold, and the remoteness of the region. The hub way up in Canada's Northwest Territories, the town of Inuvik. Close to 3,500 people living 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. See that piece there? Uh -huh. I bought that for $10 back in 1970, the first piece I bought. And we used to use it for door stops. <laughs> Vince Sharp has made and lost several fortunes since moving here in the late 1960s to strike it rich in the oil industry. When I first got here, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't a two-story building on Main Street. Like, there wasn't, you know, like, like you know, we had mud was the street, and uh, we had wooden sidewalks. Looking out over the frozen Mackenzie River from his porch, Sharp says he has seen the town change a lot but he wonders where the next economic infusion will come from. It may look like I'm driving on a snow-covered asphalt highway, but this is actually the frozen Mackenzie River. Every year from December until April, it's the only way people can drive from the town of Inuvik to Tuktoyaktuk, a little village known as the end of the road on the Arctic Ocean. As the landscape changes, construction is bringing other changes to the region. The 140-kilometer all-season road from Inuvik to Tuktoyaktuk, or Tuk as it's known, is still a couple of years from completion. From the south, Kurt Weinman of Northwind Industries is overseeing the development. Oh, this is, uh, this will be a lifelong pride thing for me. Uh, it's uh, history, right? And working from Tuk south, Mervyn Grubin is heading up construction. He calls this the road to resources. It'll just open up everything. It'll open up, uh, you know, not only for the people of Tuck, but the rest of Canada to come, or the, the rest of the world to come uh, up, up to Tuck. Currently, with no roads leading in or out of Tuck, prices are ridiculously high in the village of about 950. A bag of apples costs more than $9. Milk, 11. Cereal, 14. In the Arctic, it's always going to be like the high cost of living. Nellie Cornier, the head of the Inuvialuit Regional Corporation, hopes the all-season road will drop prices and open up the area for more business. The transportation of bringing in food to communities that are isolated without a road or without a transportation access, other than uh, maybe once a year by, uh, by, by sea, or on a continuous basis by plane. My main concern is part of the section of the road is very close to our traditional um, spring um, geese hunting and ice fishing lake, and that's going to open it up. Not all in the region support road construction. Many fear a loss of culture and heritage as the road brings in the curious and business development. In the 1980s, the offshore oil industry thrived in the Beaufort Sea, and supporters want that development back. Our community is pro-development. We want things to happen in, in a positive way just to make sure it, 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 it's, uh, it's done right. But there's no way we're all going back into trapping and you know living off, you know, the majority of us don't live off the land. The road and change are definitely coming, with some in the community questioning, can a culture that has survived thousands of years survive progress? Sean Caleb, CCTV, Tuktoyaktuk, Canada.